Well, I, I think the, the really the, the biggest development is the fact that not only we went from hope to promise, but we're realizing the promise. So in a meeting like that, there are investors, there's biotechs, there's venture capitals that are here. And this is really the most exciting thing. And it wouldn't have been there without having the science. And the science, you know, we're talking about the seven hallmarks of aging or the nine hallmark of aging. And, uh, and you know, you can ask, well, which is your favorite one? Uh, but I feel like if I was a father with eight daughters, would you ask me who's my favorite one? I wouldn't tell you. Uh, they're all my favorite. Each one of them can be targeted and each one of them can have contribution. The nice thing about those hallmarks is that they're interconnected. So we have many examples that you start treating one of them and you improve others. We maybe don't need to hit all seven or nine to get a significant uh, improvement, but this is really excited, exciting that we can start investing in specific therapy that will target the aging. And because aging is driving the diseases, we can improve life and health span immensely. So I, I wanna say two things. First of all, when you get to the age of 60, which you get because uh, there are many things that happen, important things that happen to us, sores, water, immunization, surgery, antibiotics, okay? But now you can get to the age of 60. And what happens after the age of 60? You get one disease. And the disease can be really nasty. And you get a treatment for this disease, and the treatment can be nasty. But you're accumulating very fast the second disease, the third disease, and their treatments. Every treatment has its side effect. Every disease is a suffering disease. And then there is interaction between drugs. We cannot do it anymore. We cannot do it anymore. And if we just focus on one disease at a time, let's say we solve cardiovascular disease, all, all that will happen will get Alzheimer or cancer or diabetes because we are not uh, targeting aging. The important thing to solve as far as suffering is the health span. What people don't like about the aging is the diseases. And I know because there are people who are 100 years old and don't have a disease and they have great lives and productive lives and they enjoy it immensely. It's the diseases that we suffer. But let me say another thing. It's not only about people getting old. It's about people who go, who are treated for cancer sometimes in young age by chemotherapy or radiation. They're getting older. They get disease of aging much sooner. Uh, people with HIV, mainly be because of the treatment, they are older on average by 10 years. They get their diseases of aging 10 years before others. Uh, people who are disabled, so they cannot enjoy the effect of exercise and it's hard for them even to keep the diet, okay? are also people that need our help. There's a lot of suffering outside of aging. There is a lot of suffering outside of aging where aging is, is the target that can relieve this suffering. If we want to go to Mars and make some statesman there, we need to prevent aging of the people who are going to Mars because they're exposed to radiation and they're going to have a variety of age-related disease, certainly cancers by the time they get there. So the, our future and the well-being of many, many people is that we target aging. What, what, I, what I wish on myself today is that there's already drugs in development, development that will allow me to get to the age of 85 without a single disease and that I die the next day. Now, I'm looking at centenarians and, and you know, we know that maximal lifespan of human without doing too much drama is about 115 years, 113 years. 
We die before the age of 80. So there's, you know, 35 years to realize, which we should do right now. Uh, it doesn't mean that we cannot continue, but at least it gives you horizon because you don't have to do, in my mind, that much in order to imitate the people who get there. After that, it's a little a challenge. One of the challenges for me as a scientist, as one who's heading an, an institute, as one who's writing grants, who's, as one who's being interviewed a lot, is to understand how, how do I tell people about my research and importance. And I went through stages, you know, first, I didn't want to say the word aging, so I talked about longevity. What I found out that when you say longevity, people just automatically are thinking, oh, you mean we're going to be sick for longer time. So now I'm switching and talking about health span. In fact, it depends who I'm talking to, but I'm saying, you know, when we'll have a drug that will increase your health span and you won't be sick as you go old, in the commercial for the drug, we'll talk about side effects. One of the side effects is longevity. I don't know if you are prepared for that, if you have enough money for that, if you have social security, if you have medical, okay, not, every, not everybody wants to. But I, I find that a health span is a good buzzword. The second thing that um, I'm sure we shouldn't do is we shouldn't say that aging is a disease. I think it will defeat a lot of the support that we can get. First of all, ageism is the most terrible ism that exists now, at least in the United States. It's not about women or black, it's what you do with elderly population. They are fired more, they get less opportunity, they're being laughed at. And if you say all of a sudden aging is a disease, first of all, not everybody who gets old is uh, sick. And, uh, and second, what, what? So at 65, they have another definition. Now they, they went into the sick column. What, you have to do something? You have to put them somewhere? They have to take some drugs? It, there's, there, we don't have coalition on that. And we found out that when we talk with the FDA that also doesn't want to call aging a disease, we can agree on the problems of aging without calling aging a disease. You know, we are trying to target a cluster or to delay a cluster of age-related disease, a composite of age-related disease. Okay, this is like saying aging because all we want is to prevent those diseases really. That means that we prevented the aging. So I think those two things, health span and uh, aging is a disease. And to those who actually say the opposite, they say, first of all, we should talk about living for anywhere between 150 years and 1,000 years, <laughs> um, or, uh, or talk about longevity, I would say that for us as a community, maybe we can agree, and, and I don't, it's not that I don't hope, that it's indefinite what we can do. It's not that I don't hope. I, maybe I don't see how you do it today, but it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. But I would say just that. Let's talk about the low-hanging fruit. This 35 years that as a human species we can do something. Metformin, rapamycin, combination of stuff, some senolytic. Let, let's talk about that. And in parallel, but not at the same sentence says, you know, 35 years can pass really fast. Uh, let's think what is the next thing to do and then we can let our imagination fly and talk about other things, but not intimidate people by, oh, you know, we'll do that and that'll be thousand years. That's not going to help us because we want to make progress and be recognized as the next stage of evolution. 